Hello everyone, Cutting Total Designer here. Uh, welcome to episode, <laughs> oh boy, I think it's 21 of the uh, restoration of the uh, South Bend Heavy 10 lathe. Um, we're not going to do any assembly today. I'm shooting for hopefully next weekend uh, to get the apron back together. Um, so we'll go through and do an assembly video next week. This week uh, we're going to keep it short, just give you kind of an update. Uh, I want to show you something I found on the bed that might help other people out when they're looking for other lathes uh, to be aware of uh, things that may have been reworked. So we'll uh, take a look at that and kind of update you. Got the, uh, got the saddle uh, painted, so we'll take a quick look at that and uh, then we'll take a look at the bed and go from there. Okay, hang on one second, I'll be right back. All right, well, here we are with the saddle. Uh, looking pretty good. Uh, pretty much got everything painted. You see, I didn't paint these two surfaces here. These are machine surfaces. Um, this is where, typically, if you had a taper attachment, uh, would bolt up to. Now, I, I don't have a taper attachment. Uh, probably would say, well, why don't you just go ahead and paint them since you don't have a taper attachment. One of the things I'm thinking about doing um, as we get this back together and up and running so I can actually start making some parts is I'm thinking about adding a bracket back here so it'll have uh, a two ball screw mounts, one for here and one for underneath. Uh, and actually I'm looking to try and turn this into a manual slash CNC lathe. So we'll need to make a new uh, screw for in here to accommodate a ball nut and a ball screw. Uh, so we'll have to make a new bracket for the back of the cross slide. So if we take the cross slide, slide it on here real quick. This is where the cover bolts onto, and or if you have a taper attachment, that bolts onto there. So we will make a new bracket, and now I got the screw sticking up over here for the oil. So we will make a bracket that bolts onto here uh, that will allow us then to manually turn the ball screw if we want to use it in manual mode, or We'll have a, hopefully a little servo, not a stepper, but a servo motor on the back to actually run this as a CNC. And then we'll have a ball screw going this way, and I'll make some mounts to actually mount to the V-ways on the bed at the front and the back of the machine. And then we can drive the whole saddle back and forth uh, in a CNC operation or um, with it turned off, that's what would make the servo nice because there's no drag like in a stepper. Then we could uh, engage the gears and so forth to use it in manual mode to do threading and or standard feed. So that is kind of the goal <clears throat> of what we're looking to do. Uh, so everything's coming together, getting there. We're pretty well uh, along with most of this stuff, other than assembling the apron, uh, getting it ready to go back on. And right now the biggest thing that I'm working on is the bed, trying to get it done. Um, I want to get it done and off the machine. Uh, and then after we reassemble the apron, uh, we're going to come back and we're going to disassemble the headstock. And then after the headstock's disassembled, while it's being cleaned and taken up, you know, cleaned up and, and, and repainted and so forth, we'll take the underdrive off. Um, and then we'll work on the base, uh, which hopefully shouldn't take too long. Um, the base itself, uh, let's see if I can get you reorientated here. The base itself, I think what we're going to do. This I'm going to take off and strip completely and repaint it. And then the base itself, I think what we're going to do is just, we're just going to sand it down 
and then uh, use a roller and repaint it. That should go fairly quick then. And then at that point, uh, we'll be getting pretty close to start reassembling. Um, still have to get a VFD and get the 220 line run, but we're getting a lot closer to that. Now, what I wanted to talk to you about, uh, let me get you reoriented here. I want to show you some things on the ways. Uh, that way you can, uh, if, if you're looking at a lathe, you can check to see if there's been some damage to it. So hang on one second. Okay, now this is a south bend with uh, hardened ways. You see it's got a lot of dings and dents up in this area, uh, all along in here and so forth. But, um, what I did notice, and I don't, I'm hoping that I can get the right light to see, I'm going to use a pen to kind of out mark it here. But right in this area here, okay, you can kind of see there's a line going around right in here, like so, and it goes down around at the bottom. And then you see, you know, little inclusions. Uh, this has been welded. Okay. Um, and I'm assuming, uh, of course, it's not bronze. It's steel colored, so it was probably nickel welded, which is, you know, good if you're good at nickel welding cast iron. And then it looks like the waves have been reground uh, after that because you can see uh, it's very smooth and so forth. Uh, there so that was a good sign that this bed was damaged, but uh, we had a professional Rework it with a good weld even though there's some inclusions that shouldn't really hurt anything uh, And then reground on the on the ways now at the bottom And I'm gonna try and see if that shows up right in there. Okay, so right in here. There was another chunk that was taken out and again, this was welded up again, and I'm pretty sure it was reground. And of course, these are just inclusions in the weld that didn't get filled. And then above that is this area here. Back in here, you can see where it was kind of ground on. Of course, this is a non-functional surface back here, but here is where the uh, tailstock rides on. Most of the time, you're, you know, the headstock ends right here, so you really don't have the tailstock up here very often, <laughs> unless you're doing some really short work. Uh, but it is, you know, this this whole weld area here is also, you know, about like this, and you can still see some more of the inclusions. Hopefully, it's coming up on camera good enough that you can see, you know, these little pot marks here aren't dings they're actually inclusions these are dings uh, but you can see the line at least with the naked eye I don't know how well it's going to show up on camera so this was welded that was welded this is welded and this was welded so this had some serious damage at some point in its life uh, fortunately um, we had somebody that knew how to properly weld nickel into cast iron and then they reground this so I can't complain about that too much, but <clears throat> if you're looking at an older machine that doesn't have hardened ways, you can you can see the outline of where the weld was. If they nickel welded it, hey, that's great. Uh, if they bronze welded it, yeah, not too bad if it's a soft bed. If it was a hardened bed and they brazed it, then I would be concerned because that would give us, especially on the V-ways, that would give us an area that's going to wear more rapidly than the hardened uh, area uh, were uh, on the hardened ways. So that's just something for other people to kind of keep in mind when you're looking at uh, a lathe maybe to purchase. Um, give it a good examination on the ways uh, and all the surface contacts for the both the, uh, the saddle and the uh, tailstock. Okay, so hang on one second and we'll be right back. Okay, having looked at the video, it really wasn't quite clear on there, so I'm going to actually try to move this around manually by hand and see if we can get some different light refraction here so you can kind of see what I'm talking about. And maybe a little too much light I'm trying to see if you can see 
the area and I'll just change positions here and see if it comes out a little better might be too close in the focus okay so that's one area this is the other area again I'm in here real close so trying to just get some different lighting to see if this actually can come up on video so you can see it better and get down to this spot so you can kind of see I think this one will probably come up the best but it looks like you can kind of see how I've circled around it and I'm quite a bit away from the line uh, but that gives you an idea hopefully I'll check it out here in a second when I upload it and uh, see what it looks like and then again on this area you can kind of hopefully you can kind of see it you can kind of see how there's some grind marks back here it's funny how the light follows you uh, on the angle again this spot here try to angle this so the light falls in between but just trying to get you a better shot of the actual welds so that you can see them better all right be back in a second All right, well, I thought I'd mention real quick another item that I just picked up here recently. Um, it has issues. It doesn't function. It is a pallet jack. It's physically all there. Uh, it has one wheel on this backside that half of it is gone. It doesn't pump. The brake doesn't work. So I'm assuming the hydraulic system has an issue. But I'm pretty confident that I can probably fix this and then I'll have a pallet jack that I can move stuff around with. Now, I won't mention what I got this for. Seems that like every time I sew something that I got a good deal on, uh, people don't believe the price that I got it for. So, with that being said, I'm not going to tell you I got it for free. Hang on one second, be right back. Okay, well we'll probably keep that as a wrap for today. Real quick, I didn't have a whole lot of time to spend this weekend on stuff. Uh, hopefully next weekend I'm going to lot some time so we can get the uh, apron put back together. That's uh, project number one next week. Um, and then we'll review how that goes back together, putting the wicks in and all that neat stuff. Um, and then we'll move on to the next thing after that. So. Appreciate you stopping by. Thanks for watching. Uh, if you have any comments, please leave comments. I try to respond as much as I, as best I can to everybody's comments. Do appreciate your subscriptions. Uh, appreciate you showing up just to watch. And uh, again, just toad a little bit. Bar Z Summer Bash, June 24th, last Saturday of the month of June, out at uh, Rancho Cucamongo at Stan Zinkowski's place. Great guy. Great bunch of YouTubers are going to be there. Highly suggest you check into it. Go over and, and check his uh, site out. Uh, and I'll put a link again back to Stan's place. And uh, I think with that said, we'll wrap it up. Until next time, everyone. Take care.